39 days ago, a huge nuptial flight happened outside my cottage. The yearly mating event of queen and male ants, where they have one shot to breed and continue their species. I captured a bunch of these queens and stuck them in a jar with a bunch of males and hoped they would mate by morning. Come sunrise, all males died, which is what normally happens, seeing as their only purpose in the ant world is to mate. But as for the queens, I placed all 14 of them into test tubes. Some died from natural causes, including mold, mites, and parasitic maggots. And some just didn't shed their wings nor lay eggs. But a special eight of the queen ants did proceed to lay eggs. And we've been following these eight queens as they race towards raising their first generation of workers known as the Ninetics. And guys, I'm happy to share some amazing news. It's now day 39, and you guys will love what I'm about to show you today. It's time to enter the mighty claustral chambers of our eight royal queen ants, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, the awesome news is that I can confirm that at least one of our eight queen ants raising their first generation of babies indeed successfully mated with males 39 nights ago in that jar. Now, I'm sure some of you may be confused and wondering, but Ants Canada, isn't it already confirmed that all eight of these queen ants mated since they all have babies? Well, the answer to that is no, and I'll explain in a sec why that is, but guys, I'll be needing your help and opinions later in the video to make an important decision regarding these Queen Carpenter ants and their brood. So do stay tuned for all that coming up. All right, so to quickly explain why up until today, we didn't know for sure if these Queen ants in test tubes all caring for their babies had successfully mated in the jar is because queens that don't end up mating on their nuptial flight can still actually go on to give birth to babies which end up growing into male ants. Due to ant genetics, any haploid eggs that aren't fertilized with a male ant sperm grow into male ants, and diploid eggs that are fertilized with a male ant sperm become female ants, specifically worker ants and queens. So, despite the fact that our eight queens laid eggs a few weeks ago, we still didn't know for sure if our eight queens we're simply raising a bunch of male ants, which would suck because then we couldn't grow ant colonies from them, or indeed made it in the jar I stuck them in on that nuptial flight night, and were legit founding their own ant colonies. We've all been eagerly waiting to see if the pupae would turn into adult worker ants. But AC family, I have some awesome news. Check out what I saw in a couple of the test tubes when I peeked in on them this week. First, behold Queen 2. She stands over a very impressive pile of brood, namely eggs, larvae of different stages, and cocoons. Now if you look carefully, you can see the end of the pupa inside that cocoon popping out and actually moving. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea ant pupae were even capable of moving at this stage. But what was even more exciting was that judging from the shape of the pupa, it looked to me like there was indeed a worker ant wrapped in that cocoon. We won't know for sure until this cocoon actually breaks open and we see a nanitic worker ant, but I'm pretty hopeful that queen number two indeed has her first worker ant coming any day now, confirming that she indeed successfully made it in the jar 39 days ago. Yay! Pretty awesome, right? But guys, that's not all. Check out this queen. Queen number seven. Whoa, look at her. It's as if she decided to lay out all her brood in a line for us, in order of age. We have eggs at the far left, young larvae, intermediate larvae, and most exciting of all, naked pupae. Now two things about those pupae. First, they're naked because the larvae probably had problems spinning a cocoon. Usually the pupating larvae just use their surrounding siblings as a lattice work to help spin their cocoon. But sometimes the brood get too spaced out 
and the larvae fail to have any kind of structure to help them build a cocoon, so they say, screw it, I'm pupating cocoon free. Hence, the naked pupae everywhere. But the second thing I wanted to point out is that look guys, those pupae are definitely worker ants. Queen number seven is 100% confirmed to be fertilized. Double yay! AC family, we have a future ant colony in the making. What should we name her, guys? Let me know in the comments. Queen number seven seems to stand out above the rest, as she's more reddish in color for some reason. So I suspect she may even be a different species? Not sure. But I was happy to know she was well on her way to founding her own ant colony. Now in terms of the other queen carpenter ants, here's queen number one, who has such an impressive amount of brood. Lots of cocoons developing. I bet she too is fertilized. Queen number three, also with lots of cocoons and mature larvae. I tried to look as best as I could into that cocoon, and it does also look like there is a worker in there. Crossing our fingers that queen number three is also fertilized. Queen number four, which we saw had a mysterious mite in her test tube last week, is now also caring for a few cocoons. I can't quite tell if there are workers in there or not, but I sure hope so. Queen number five sadly has brood but as we saw last time, the brood is super slow developing. It's weird, but if I were to make a bet, my guess is this queen hadn't mated. And these slow developing babies are all males. Only time will tell. Cheer her on, AC family. Queen number six, whom we watched last week lovingly feed her babies her self-made nutritious soup, regurgitated and created from her own body tissues, is now caring for lots of cocoons. Only a few more days, and I bet we'll see many worker ants here too. That's my guess. What about you guys? And finally, queen number eight has brood of different stages, including a couple cocoons there. By the way, wanna hear something cool real quick? See that black dot on the cocoon? That is called the meconium, a fecal pellet. So get this, ant babies don't poop for their entire lives. It all just kind of collects inside them as they grow. And right before pupating, they expel this fecal pellet, the meconium, and it stays inside the cocoon. This is perfect because it's such a sterile way to manage waste. Because the queen doesn't have to worry about ant baby poop squirting everywhere, helping the birth claustral chamber stay clean. So that is what that black dot is. It's baby poo inside the cocoon. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, so AC family, here's the part where I'll need your help. Now that you've seen all the queens at day 39, and we already have confirmed one queen to be fertilized, and probably a bunch more of these queens soon to reveal that they also are raising future mighty ant colonies, I was wondering how many of these queens and future ant colonies should we keep as our pets? I mean, if all these queens turn out to be fertilized, I don't intend on rearing eight carpenter ant colonies. I really only need one, but perhaps you guys might find a worthy reason to raise more than one. For example, to try them in different setups? I don't want to mix these queens because I don't know if this species of carpenter ant allows for colony fusion like that. They will likely fight to the death. And no, I'm not doing a battle royale ant war of the colonies. Last colony standing becomes our pets blah blah blah. Not into that. But what do you guys say? Keep one? Two? Three? or four of the ant colonies with the most successful worker ant counts? If so, which of these eight queens would you say we should keep? Let me know in the comment section, guys, and I will go by what most of you recommend. I plan to just let any extra queens, along with any workers and brood they might have, back into the wild by burying their test tubes into the ground for them to burrow out when they're ready. We're coming to what I call the end of the beginning of an era for these queen ants, whom we've all been eagerly following over the past 39 days. I can't wait for one or more of these queens to found full and thriving ant colonies of their own, so we can move them into proper ant setups. Feel free to also think of names for the future colonies, as I'll be asking you for names in a future video for all of us to vote on, as well as what kind of setup you would like to see us transfer them into once they're ready. I truly love this part of ant keeping. Watching a queen ant found her own ant colony. It's truly an amazing experience. And my favorite part of the hobby. If any of you guys also want to try keeping ants with me, it's actually still anting season in the Northern Hemisphere and the final nuptial flights are wrapping up for the year. 
So go out and look for those Queen Ants, guys. For those in Australia, your nuptial flights are just getting started. But if you don't manage to find any queens at all, no worries. Just head on over to my website at antscanada.com and click the Queen Ants for Sale tab to find ant sellers in your area selling Queen Ants with brood, like these starting colonies you see here. Or if you're lucky, you'll even find sellers of fully mature ant colonies with lots of workers. And while you're there, be sure to also pick up all your pro ant keeping gear, ant farms, and literature at our shop. I'd love for you guys to keep ants with me and witness for yourself all the amazing things we see on this channel in real life within the comfort of your own home. By the way, we ship out of the US. I can't wait for our first worker ants to officially arrive, which will probably be in a few days. And when they do, you can be sure I'll be there to film it all so we could marvel together and welcome our newest ant members of the AC family. Thank you all so much for watching and supporting the ants. It's Aunt Love, forever. AC Family, did you enjoy today's episode? Follow these continuing real life ant stories by smashing that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play footage of the Queen Ants in their test tubes at day 39, go check them out. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what is ant milk made of? Congratulations to Kate Cook, who answered, old wing muscle. Congratulations Kate, you just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is a meconium? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's ant love forever.